Hey everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rieger, uh, another episode of The Daily Ticket. This one for the 2nd of February. It's a uh, Friday. I'm not even going to bother. This Friday is so much not as cool as last Friday. A week ago today. Holy shit, how fun was that? Getting ready for the NFC title game. Talking about if the Lions could beat the 49ers. The dream of being 60 minutes away from a Super Bowl. Not going to lie, it's still affecting me. I will not lie at all. I find the little things in life to get me through this very difficult time. Like, for instance, how about the fact that Bill Belichick was not hired? There was like 10 openings in the NFL, and Belichick doesn't get a single one of those jobs. He should have retired. He should have walked away. Like, there's all that. There's always that cute little debate. Who was better, Brady or Belichick? And we already knew the answer. Once Brady left New England and went to Tampa Bay and won a Super Bowl, the answer was pretty damn obvious. Belichick has sucked without Tom Brady. But then not to get hired by any other team, he's in his 70s. Why not just walk away? Do you think, and maybe I only think like this, do you think Tom Brady's laughing somewhere? Like, guy's got a great life already. He's getting paid damn near $400 million with Fox to go do some broadcasting next year. He's got all kinds of business ventures. He's single now. Doesn't have a wife. I'm sure he's got all kinds of women chasing him. Like, Tom Brady's got a pretty great life. I think that's fair to assume. You think he wakes up on a day like today when the last coaching hire is made? There's no more head coaching vacancies, and he just laughs his ass off. Like Tom Brady, every now and then, do you remember when he used to play? They used to win a game, and then the following day, he used to make like a little video mocking the team they just beat. I wish Tom Brady would make a video mocking Bill Belichick. Belichick should have walked away. Now we look silly. Should have walked away. He's gone from the greatest coach of all time to just the greatest coach of all time that nobody wanted once he finally left the Patriots. Anyway, I find that funny. I do. I do. But we got good stuff to talk about today. Because I think it's official. We can finally say it. Let's run it back. As the kids say. Lions getting everybody back. We knew a couple days ago Ben Johnson was going to come back. He decided to stay with the Lions. More on that momentarily. But now we find out Aaron Glenn is coming back as well. There was one job left. It was the Washington Commanders. They decide to hire the former Cowboys defensive coordinator, Dan Quinn. So that means Aaron Glenn's staying in Detroit, and I think that's fantastic news. Glenn is interviewed for a head coaching gig for now four straight seasons. Didn't get one. He's 50 years old. There's no doubt in my mind he's going to be a head coach in the years to come. He's a great coach. He is. And I know there's some Detroiters down on Aaron Glenn just because his defense at times was really difficult to watch. But I think it's a great thing that he's back. I do. Remember that he was voted in a players-only vote league-wide as the best coordinator in football. Not the best defensive coordinator, but the best all-around coordinator. And his defense got better. His defense statistically was the worst in football last year, got up to 19th best this year, and they were second best against the run. So they went from 29th against the run to second best. Let's not forget the Lions did not allow a single 100-yard running back to rush against them all season long. The only individual that got 100 yards or more was Justin Fields. He's a quarterback, so that doesn't count, right? I think Aaron Glenn's a great coach. I think his players love him. And I think his defense was tremendous in the postseason. They held the Rams to six points in the second half of that wild card game. The Rams are a pretty high-powered, potent offense. They held the Bucs to 13 points in the second half of that divisional game to get to the NFC title game. They held the Niners to seven first-half points in the NFC title game before it all came busting apart. And guys, I feel, have gotten better under his tutelage. Like Alex Anzalone, nobody wanted him back. I thought he had a sensational season. 
Ify Melon Fan Wu pretty much came from nowhere and turned out to be a guy that made an impact almost on a game-by-game -game basis. Now, guys regress, too. Like, I kind of feel John Kaminsky was never heard from again. He got hurt for a little bit, too. And Isaiah Bugs didn't work out, and I think he could have. But the Lions did go out and hire a new defensive line coach. More on that momentarily as well. But I think it's a great thing that Aaron Glenn is back. I do. I think it's the commander's loss. I think it's the Lions game. And now you got pretty much the entire same staff coming back next year to make a run for hopefully a Super Bowl. Here's the other thing, by the way, and I've heard shows talk about this next year. And this is wild to say. Are we, can we say it's Super Bowl or bust? You were 30 minutes away from your first ever Super Bowl. I got to believe the goal in life is to get better year by year. Got to make the Super Bowl of the season is a disappointment. That's wild to say, isn't it? But I, I kind of feel it might be true. Unless there's some massive injury or a crazy reason that you couldn't do anything about. And that's why you couldn't make it. Lions have the fourth best odds to win it all next year. That, my friends, is fucking insane. And pretty awesome. And pretty awesome that Aaron Glenn is coming back. And now there's consistency. I mean, talk about this consistency. Glenn and Ben Johnson have been here for quite some time. And I think the Lions are better for it. So great news about Aaron Glenn. But what about Ben Johnson? We're still talking about Ben Johnson. Why, you ask? Because it's really weird, the reporting that's going on with Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator. Let's go through the timeline very quickly, all right? So the commanders hired a guy by the name of Adam Peters as their GM. Many people in the media thought Peters and Ben Johnson were destined to work together. Remember Boomer Esiason? I played you the clip. I want to say it was last Thursday or Wednesday. He went on WFAN, then he went on some fan duel show, and he doubled down. He guaranteed that Ben Johnson was taking the commander's job once the Lions were out of the postseason. We know what happened. Commanders were supposed to fly in on Tuesday to meet with Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn. And ben called them up and said, not interested. Sorry, boys. Got some unfinished business. Maybe next year. You're the commanders. You'll need another head coach. You guys suck. So we were all ecstatic, obviously. But then a weird thing started to happen. All these negative tweets came out about Ben Johnson. It started with Adam Schefter, who tweeted out that Johnson's asking price was too high. And it spooked some teams. Now, remember, that was a little rumor throughout the course of the season. And then the representatives for Ben Johnson said, this is bogus. This is shoddy reporting. This is not true at all. Now, nobody has come out in support of Ben Johnson to say it's not true, that he wasn't expecting to get paid too much. But I don't believe it for a second. I don't. I don't believe that he was asking for too much money. Why? Because the commanders were ready to fly out to see him. But let me get to that momentarily. Because Albert Breer also came out day ago, two days ago. And now the new narrative on Ben Johnson is not just that he would have cost you way too much to hire. He was asking for way too much, but also that he was a shitty interview. I've seen now two reports. Albert Breer was the first that Ben Johnson just had a really bad interview. Let me just get this straight. He was asking for too much money to be a first-time head coach, and he did not interview well. Do you believe it? No, I don't. Let me tell you why. And maybe you just think I'm being a Ben Johnson fanboy. I don't know. But if he interviewed like shit, why was there a second interview scheduled? And by the way, he had second interviews scheduled with other places that he talked to as well. If he was asking for too much money, why were the commanders willing to fly out here? If he interviewed like shit, why were the commanders willing to fly out here? Now, I don't know about this for a fact, but I don't think the commanders were willing to fly out anywhere else to talk to any other candidates. I think it's pretty obvious what happened. Adam Schefter probably talks to team guys. 
He talks to team owners. He talks to front office guys. And of course, the commanders did not get their guy. I believe Ben Johnson was their first choice. Ben said, nope, I'm going to stay in Detroit. I think the commanders decided to put this garbage stuff out there. Why? Because then they can say, we didn't like him. He didn't interview well. His camp was asking for way too much money. We got our guy. They don't want to allow their media or their fans to believe that they did not get their top choice. That their top choice would rather stay as an OC than go to their garbage franchise that hasn't won in 20 years. That's what I think happened. It's almost like they were butthurt. They decided to fly out here. They wanted Ben Johnson or Aaron Glenn. Ben said, nope, sorry. And they were so butthurt about it that they decided to maybe float a couple of untrue things about Ben Johnson. Uh, maybe they are true. Like, what the hell do I know? Maybe he's a garbage interviewer. Then why you want to interview him again? Why was he your top candidate? Maybe he was asking for too much money. Here's what I know about too much money, by the way. Any NFL owner turns a profit. Fair to say? Every NFL owner is a billionaire. If you think there's a guy out there, in this instance, Ben Johnson, that can win you a tremendous amount of games and get you to a Super Bowl and do all the fun things that you want to do, money isn't an option. Let's say Ben was asking for 14, 15 million a year. Rumor has it that Harbaugh with the Chargers got 16 mil. Let's just say it's true. No owner gives a shit. They're going to pay the money because they believe that guy can give them the glory that they want. A Super Bowl. And any amount of money is worth that. So I want you to comment in the comment section yourself. There's now reports that Ben Johnson was a bad interview and his camp was asking for just way too much money. I don't buy any of it. I think the commanders are butthurt that they couldn't get their top choice, that he'd rather stay in Detroit with a pretty kick-ass culture. So they decided to say these things. And the talking heads out there, whether it be Albert Breyer or Adam Schefter, decided to go with it. I think it's kind of crappy to tell you the truth. Now, if you believe the other way that he truly is a shitty interview, then feel free. Comment section. Let me know what you believe. But that's my take on it. And it probably should stop. It's kind of ridiculous, don't you think? Dude wanted to stay in Detroit. He had unfinished business. Deal with it. Move on to your next target. Here's the other thing, too, by the way. If Ben Johnson wasn't your number one candidate, why did it take so long to hire a guy? Dan Quinn, the guy they eventually hired, came from Dallas. They've been out of the playoffs for quite some time now. You could have made that hire last week or the week before when they got eliminated by the Packers. But no, you were hanging out for Ben. Why? Because he was probably your top target. And he told you no, and you didn't take it very well. So you decided to start a couple of nasty rumors. Not very cool, Washington. I hope the Lions kick your ass. Let me know what you think. One more for you. Because the Lions do make a hire. They go out and they hire Terrell Williams as their new run game coordinator and defensive line coach. He comes from the Titans. I read this article from the Pride of Detroit, how Titan fans did not want to lose Williams. They all believe he is a future head coach in waiting. He's also doing some coaching at the Senior Bowl this week. He was an assistant coach under Mike Vrabel this season and also an acting head coach during preseason in a game against the Bears, which was a nice gesture by Vrabel. So it sounds like the Lions got themselves a good defensive Lions coach and a good run game coordinator. So the Lions make a hire. Now, will they lose anybody else to their staff? I know there's members of their staff still interviewing with other jobs or with other teams to get promotions. We'll wait. We'll find out. But right now, yes, it sucks that they lost the Niners. It sucks that they're not playing in the Super Bowl next week. But the Lions seem like they're in really good shape to, as the thumbnail says, run it back. So let me know what you think. Aaron Glenn is sticking around. Does that make you happy or sad? The Ben Johnson negative rumors. He was a bad interview. He was asking for way too much money. How dare Ben Johnson? You buying any of that? I'm not. And then 
Terrell Williams, the new run game coordinator and defensive line coach for the Lions as they make it official. That happened late Wednesday night, I believe. So there you go. I hope you enjoy your weekend. I hope everybody enjoys their weekend. But before we get to the weekend, you want to do some comments? How about some comments out there? I must say, I feel pretty good about myself because after the SOL remark and all you people telling me what a god-awful human being I was, I feel the comments have gotten better. I might have shamed you into giving me better comments, but I'm totally fine with that. Yesterday's podcast was about my radio partner, Woji. Woji, I thought, made a stupid comment, an outlandish comment. Some of you people agree. Some of you people don't agree. But Wojo went on his morning show appearance Wednesdays with Wojo with Stoney and Jansen and said he doesn't believe that Lions fans are going to be haunted by what happened last Sunday in Santa Clara. I could not disagree more. So I put it out there. Let me read some comments. Avid editor, 66, says, I'm not haunted. It sucked, but I'm over it. And listen. I think that's a fantastic attitude to have. I just don't share it. We in Detroit don't get over anything. We're still talking about Big Shot Bob not being guarded by Rashid Wallace. We're still talking about Big Poppy and his Grand Slam in Game 2 of the ALCS of 2013. We don't get over shit. And this was the grand prize. This was the one thing we wanted the most. A Super Bowl. Something we never thought we would get. So, again, I am willing to believe that you don't feel this way if you're not a Lions fan. But if you're a Lions fan, I don't think you're ever getting over it. Even if the Lions go on to the Super Bowl eventually, which is hopefully going to be the case, nobody's ever getting over it. How about this? Desert underscore sky underscore guy says, not haunted forever. It's a fucking game, dude. Jesus Christ. Um, Kind of sounds like he's haunted, doesn't it? Tom McClain, 88-93, worst loss in my 61 years, fan since 1968, loyal to the end, hashtag one pride proud. Got a couple more for you. Were people haunted by the loss? CI5619, I'm not haunted because this is sports and quirky games like this happen. A worse NFC championship loss happened to the Packers versus the Seahawks in 15. They were up 12 points with less than six minutes to go. Keisha Smith, 7851, not haunted forever. More like devastated for a few days. Looking forward to the draft and next season. I am too, but I'm haunted. And then one more for you. Colonel Straits, 1069, haunted, please. You're being hyperbolic and also kind of pathetic. I woke up Monday and went to work. My life did not change one bit. This was not even close to the worst loss. Well, sir or madam, please tell me, what was the worst loss? And number two, I don't believe you. Not at all. Or you're a way better person than me and a way stronger person than me. I think most people are haunted, will be haunted forever. And maybe they won't admit it. You probably don't want to go around admitting that you feel haunted, right? I'll admit it. My name is Jeff Rieger, and I will forever be haunted by what happened in Santa Clara last Sunday. Furthermore, after I die, I'm sure I'll be haunted as well. That's going to do it for the Daily Ticket. I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. We'll catch you on uh, Monday. I don't know what there is to talk about anymore, but we'll figure something out. Guys, have a great weekend. You guys are the best. Please rate, subscribe, review, all that kind of good stuff as well. Bye-bye.